We want to welcome you today. We are so excited about tonight's service. I really pray that Jesus will speak to you. I pray as we go into the praise and worship that you will experience God's presence, that you will experience the presence of the Holy Spirit and come to Him tonight and say, Lord, come and speak to my heart. Lord, come and refresh my spirit. Lord, thank you that you are the living water and thank you that in you I can be strong. Father, thank you that I can stand on the rock. You are my fortress. You are my shield. Jesus, you are my everything. Let's pray. Father, Lord, tonight we come to you in the precious name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that we can stand on the Word of God, stand on the rock, the fortress. Father, thank you that we don't have to doubt. Father, thank you that you are sure. Thank you that eternity is sure. Thank you, Father, that your Word is refreshing for our spirits and that that is our daily bread. And thank you, Jesus, for the living water and that you are our light in the precious name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy the worship. And this is how I fight my battles And this is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles This is how I fight my battles
It's so awesome to spend time in God's presence. It's so necessary for us to spend time in His presence. And it's one of my prayers these days. Like Moses prayed, I say, Lord, help me that I walk and move out of Your presence. I don't want to move into Your presence. I want to move out of Your presence. And I think it's not that I'm there yet. We all have a journey. I wish I had a halo above my head, meaning I'm perfect, I'm not. 
um, just as for you and for me and for Moses and nobody, every other leader or any other person that has ever believed in God and accepted Jesus, there's a place that we have to go to God, that we have to press in. He's our Father, He loves us, but there's a relationship. There's a coming into His presence, nearing to God as He nears to us. Today's message is we need light to see. And I pray that today the Word of God will stir something inside of your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to the Word. In John chapter 5 verse 2, we're busy with a series of John. And I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm jumping a, cha- a chapter, but we're going through John from the start to the finish. Last week was, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. Everything has a beginning and the beginning is the Word. And as we move, we're going to start with John chapter 5. John chapter 5 verse 2 says, Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, in a Aramaic called Bethesda, in which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, people that were sick, blind, lame, paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. 38 years. That's older than some of you are. And that's almost as old as I am. Um, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, another one steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. Now I want to get into this story here. This not a parable, a real life event that happened. You see, this man was lame for 38 years. That means that this man was affected in an area, a physical area of his life that also affected his spiritual um, consciousness and his relationship with God. Because I want to tell you that when you are lame, when you don't have use with for your legs, it's a challenge. I haven't experienced that, but I've seen so many testimonies. I see there's a there's some people that's got big testimonies, but for a lot of people, for a lot of people, that has taken the place and has caused them to fall into depression. Now, I want to make this practical today and say that each and every single one of us can have a physical condition or we can have a spiritual condition that incapacitates us, that we are not able to walk. We can, we can be in an area in our life that affects our walking with Jesus, that affects our relationship with Jesus. And it feels to us, I want you to listen to this, it feels to us like we can't just get there. Because you see, this lay man was sitting next to the pool of Bethesda, and as the story goes, whether it was now, how it worked, I don't know, um, there was an angel stirring the waters. And when that angel stirred the waters, everybody got into the water and everybody wanted to, be, wanted to be healed. But he could not get there. He could not get to that supernatural touch. He could not get to that place where everything just went and it was gone. And I just realized today that so many of us sometimes is incapacitated in an area where it just feels like we can't get there. And we've got this desire that we can get to God and God can supernaturally, miraculously just touch us and all our problems, all our problems will go away. I don't know about you, but um, that's sometimes how I feel. I said, Lord, can't can't you just just touch me, Lord? And everything goes, everything that, all my struggles and everything goes away. All the things, uh, the struggle between spirit and flesh, the things in the world that captivates me so many times. And uh, I've realized something that as a preacher, as a pastor, um, many times in church I've, I've seen people and myself when I was younger as we went forward and I thought that when someone prayed for me there would be one magical touch and Yuri will be changed and I realized I realized something that in, when I got saved there was an instant we a, a whole part of me just changed there was I stopped swearing I stopped um, uh, uh, a lot of things just I just really changed there was a, I was renewed I received the Holy Spirit but there was still a struggle with my flesh and I want to say to you that every single day is a struggle with our flesh every single day is a struggle with your thoughts every single day you have to take your want to what you want to do to the cross of Calvary and say Lord I need to crucify the flesh so that you can stand up with the spirit man and overcome the fleshly desires of the or the things that 
that, that we want to do or the emotions or the way we want to react, whatever it is, doesn't matter. We, res we resurrected with Christ. Now the key in the story is, while this man was waiting for a magic touch, Jesus was on the, on the scene. So I want to say to you that there's many of us that might feel like, Lord, when, when will, will that day come when that I will receive that mag magic touch? And I want to tell you today that Jesus is on the scene, right next to you. Jesus is standing there, but He's asking this man, He says, Do you want to be healed? Do you want to walk? Do you want to get to that place? What that, that what you are trusting for, do you want it? Because if you don't have a desire in your heart to have access to Jesus, if you don't have a desire in your heart to stand up and walk for Jesus, because this man, after he received his legs, after he received walking, what would he do with it? What would he do with it? Would he live his life glorifying God? Or would he live his life, well, now I've got legs, now I can do whatever I want to. Now I've got walking in my legs and strength in my legs, I can do whatever, whatever I want to. And I want to ask you for the desire, the desire that you've got for the things that you're trusting the Lord for. What do you want to do with it? Do you, not only do you desire it, are you willing to bring glory to God in it? And then he's got excuses, this man. Jesus asked him a lot of times, Jesus, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is there. And, 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 and they're on, uh, Jesus is on the scene. Jesus is on the scene. And then we've got many excuses sometimes. And I'm not talking about only physical. I'm talking about, let's talk about a spiritual condition where, we, where we, we're not walking in certain areas of our lives and it feels like we can't get there. We've got many excuses a lot of times. Is it not? Yeah, but this and maybe that and maybe tomorrow and you know what, this and... And that's the truth. That's the truth. A lot of times the excuses... And the, the way of reasoning that we reason is the reason that we're sitting where we're sitting. But here's the thing. Jesus is on the scene. And he says to this man, do you want to walk? Then Jesus speaks to him. He speaks to him. The word is being spoken to this man. This man responds to the word. He says, get up, take your bed and walk. And I believe it was instantaneous as this man responded to the word of God being spoken into his life. As he said, I'm getting up. There was a healing that take place. And I want to tell you today that at the place where you at, when you respond to the word of God, when God says, I want you to stand up. I want you to be strong. I want you to move out of your circumstances where you in now. Get up and walk. That when you say, Lord, in faith, in faith, I'm going to do this. There's an automatic and an instant healing that coincides with your reaction to the Word of God. That coincides with your obedience to the Word of God. And will you, will it be, and I just want to say a lot of us get disappointed because we feel like a lot of times we've got victory. Then we get disappointed when we get tempted or we get uh, uh, challenged or, or there's an, it feels like there's a fight. We get, we get distraught about the fight. To be walking in victory is always a fight. You see, when David was on the roof and not in battle, he fell. If you in battle, if you in a place where you are standing strong and Jesus against the enemy, you in battle, you, you're actually in a safe place. You're actually in a safe place. I want to say this again. What we sometimes perceive as difficult is actually a safe place in your life. It's when there's no wars. It's when there's no problems that we tend to slide back. And because we slide back and become comfortable, it causes us to be inca incapacitated because we don't want to fight anymore. In John 5 verse 14, Jesus says to the same man, he, the man leaves, they ask him, who healed you? It was on the Sabbath day. He said it's, he doesn't know the man. Then Jesus finds him in the temple and Jesus says something interesting to him. He says, afterwards Jesus found him, John 5 14, in the temple and said to him, see you are well, sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. And I thought to myself, yes, Lord, this is a, this is a very strong scripture. I'm reading it again. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well, sin no more, that nothing worse, nothing worse may happen to you. And I thought to myself, yes, Lord, okay, so what worse can happen than being lame? And being in, in, in capacity uh, to, to, be, to be, you not be, being able to walk, not being able to get to that place. This condition affects your whole life. 
What can be worse than that? And I realized there's one thing that can be worse than that. Two things, actually. Three things. But let me focus on just two. The biggest thing. The biggest thing. Because you see, sin means missing the mark. And the biggest mark that you can miss in your life is Jesus Christ. The biggest sin there is, is unbelief in the Holy Spirit. Unbelief in the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's something worse than sitting at the side of the pool, being lame for 38 years incapacitated something worse there is something worse than being lame for 38 years something and it's when you have to spend eternity eternity outside the presence of God outside the presence of God and then the second thing I believe that is worse is when the the captive the one when you're being held captive in your mind in your heart feeling that you, when you sin, because make no mistake, there's a cause and effect of sin in our lives. There's grace, Jesus forgives us, but the consequences of sin, we still have. <laughs> yes, the consequences of st- sin, we still have, because God disciplines His children. Amen? And I can't think of something worse than the feeling of, I missed it for so long, and I never entered into the promise, like Israel that never went into, into Canaan for 40 years, because they did not believe. I believe that's a terrible, terrible, terrible punishment and discipline because we don't believe what God wants to take us into. You see, this layman could have not responded to the the word of Jesus, but he chose to. And Jesus is on your scene. Jesus is on my scene. And he's saying, do you want, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be changed? Do you want to be touched? And if we respond, as we respond, I believe God will connect with us. Because that's who he is. Then a few chapters later, Jesus going to the booths of light, the, the booths of light, and they were celebrating uh, the whole um, um, Israel out of Egypt. Uh, the Jews, they were celebrating They were celebrating that. But the reality of the matter is, as they were celebrating the, 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 the Feast of Booths, which was signified by a lot of lights, a lot of lights, Jesus says the following. And Jesus, during that Feast of Lights, the Feast of Booths says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And as amazing it was that God took Israel out of Egypt, if those Jews, if any person, we can celebrate it, but if we don't celebrate the fact that Jesus died and rose again, that He gave His life, the one and only Son, so that whoever believes in Him shall have eternal life, the Feast of Booths or the celebration of the fact that Israel went out of Egypt will mean nothing. In our lives, Jesus is the light of the world. And I want to tell you today, for today's sermon, if we don't go to Jesus, if Jesus isn't the center point, if our focus is not on the cross, it will be difficult to see. I want to say this again to you. If your focus is not on Jesus, if your focus is not on the cross, if your focus is not on the Word of God, where this is a central point of your life, where you say, Lord, help me, because we all need help, Help me, but I want to make you the first, the first thing in my life. Lord, I want to put you as, as, in the right order, in the godly order, at the top of my priority list. Then you'll be able to see, because Jesus is the light. When Jesus is somewhere in the back pocket, or He's not existing at all, it will be difficult for you to discern and properly, spiritually see what God wants to do in your life through you and around you. Jesus is the light of the world. But the other side also when you focus on Jesus, not because you're perfect, but because you're willing, you're obedient, I believe you will be able to see and spiritually discern. My last um, story that I want to go, I'm jumping a few chapters again to John chapter 9, and it's Jesus heals a man born blind. And he passed by in John chapter 9 verse 1, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, Rabbi who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God may be displayed in him. Before I carry on, sometimes things happen in our lives just like with this person. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't somebody else's fault. It was for the reason that in a certain day, a certain time, a certain season, Jesus will come onto the scene and something will happen with this person and God will be glorified. Can it be that there's some situation or something in your life that's not your fault? 
It's not somebody else's fault. It doesn't make sense. You can't understand it. But God purposed it like this. So that He can bring glory to, to, to God. It could be a season. It could be a situation. It could be a job. It could be a sickness. That God in a sense has purposed it for a time where you're going to trust Him and say, Lord, I'm not giving up. I believe that you are for me and with me. I'm trusting you. And Lord, even if you do not deal with this, like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, when they were standing in the furnace of fire and the king said to them, bow, bow, otherwise you're going into the furnace of fire. And they said, even if our God does not save us, we will not bow. And I believe that if we've got that attitude, Lord, even if you don't touch my circumstances, I will still serve you. Even if you don't change my circumstances, I will still serve you. It's really that, I believe, that faith that pleases, pleases God. But I want to tell you that there's some things and situations and the way that we walk through life that God has got His finger on and His eyes on and He wants to use it for His glory. But there's also a process. You see, sometimes God is more involved and interested in the process of developing character in our lives than he is in the end result. You see, if we live from end result to end result to end result, from miracle to miracle to miracle, we will never build character. But when there's a season in between God touching, God coming onto the scene, a season in between the miracle, in that season where you are trusting, having faith, standing strong, God is building character in you and He's, he's preparing fruit in you. And you can stand for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then you become mature in Christ. Otherwise, we'll be weak. When we're weak, it means like if we walk from miracle to miracle to miracle and we're not able to endure in the middle, we'll fall away like that seed that fell onto the rocky places. The root jumps up into the shallow ground, but it gets quickly with the, with the troubles of the world. It, it, the the, the plant, plant, plant goes up, it dies. Um, I'm going to continue reading in John chapter 9 verse 4. And it says, We must work the works of Him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Jesus had a had a Jesus had a had a had an instruction from his father. And his instruction was to go to the world to fulfill his purpose, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen. But so each and every single one of us, you, me, every person in this world has the potential and has the calling of God on his life. Judas that betrayed Jesus had a calling. He was one of the 12 apostles. One of the 12 apostles. But somewhere between money and, the, and Jesus, he got mixed up. He got confused. And he started doubting Jesus and he wanted to place his trust in money. That's why he, 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 he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. It's a testimony of what was happening and going on in his heart before he betrayed Jesus. Before he betrayed Jesus. I want to say to you today, in love, that we've got the word of God that's a lamp to our feet. I want to challenge you. Jesus is faithful to his work. When Jesus speaks a work in Isaiah 55, it's on my ring. As the snow and the rain comes down from heaven to water the earth, so shall the word of God be. It shall be like seed in the earth, bringing forth seed to the sow and bread to the eater. God's word that he speaks shall not return empty to him. When we follow God and his word, doesn't matter how it feels, doesn't matter what your emotions is, doesn't matter what you're thinking, doesn't matter how, uh, what's happening in the world. When we follow God's word, that's, that's when, when, when we become faithful, faithful. Because you see, we have to follow Jesus because of what he said and not what is happening around us. In John 9 verse 5 it says, As long as I am in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Jesus is seated at the right hand side of the Father now. He's poured out His Holy Spirit in each and every single one of us. And we are the light of the world now and the salt of the world. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is shining through us and we are Christ-like as Jesus is becoming more evident in our lives. As we yield to Jesus, as we yield to God, He becomes more evident in our lives in the precious name of Jesus. I don't know for who this is, but it's time that you take your, 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 your sight of people, of man, Man, men of God or women of God, take your side of people and start looking at yourself and say, Lord, may you be, don't be so critical about what should and should not have happened with this person or that person. Um, look at yourself and say, Lord, protect me, protect me. May you be revealed in me. Let me be faithful with what you called me to do. 
The Bible says first take out the, 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 the plank out of your own eye before you try taking out the splinters out of somebody else's eye. Why? Because it's difficult to see if you're poking because you'll find yourself taking a splinter out of somebody else's eye. You're poking, you're putting your finger in your eye and you're actually hurting them. So uh, first take out the plank out of your own eye. This is for me and for you and for everything, for everyone. John 9 verse 6 says, Having said these things, he spit on the ground, he spit on the ground, and made mud with the saliva. He anointed the man's eyes with mud. But listen now, here's the key. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Came back seeing. That means Jesus was on the scene. Jesus touched this person. He put mud on his eyes, but he gave him a word. He gave him an instruction. And as this blind man went, to this pool. Now this pool, if you don't know, in Ezekiel and Ezekiah's time, they had a pool there that there was a natural spring of water. And they cut it off, they pulled it together so that when they are being besieged, the enemy won't be able to get fresh water. There was not fresh water around them. So this whole pool of fresh water actually signified being washed in the Holy Spirit. Remember the Bible says we are being baptized into Christ by the Holy Spirit. So when this man had to walk to the pool, it signifies us responding to the Word of God, being baptized into the Holy Spirit, into Jesus Christ, and through that process, on the way back, He saw. It's the same with me, and the same with you. When we've got areas where we can't see, or areas saying, Lord, that's, that's hindering us from seeing or walking, we ask Jesus to touch us and to heal us. But there's also a response and an obedience and an action of faith that follows us. So I want to say to you, be obedient to the word of God when Jesus speaks to us through his word and through instruction. And as you respond to it by, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to see. You will be able to see. And I believe that this is what I want to close with for today. We have to be obedient and we have to be faithful by the leading of the Holy Spirit when God speaks to us. Not because we're perfect. <laughs> no man is perfect. No man is sinless. But we've got the ability by the power and the leading of the Holy Spirit to be obedient and faithful to the Word of God. And the more you do it, the longer you do it, the stronger and more mature you will become. But do you want to? Do you have the desire to please God more than please man? Do you have the desire to please Jesus more than, you, than your flesh? Do you have the desire to say, Lord, not only 80% of me, take 100% of me? Because I believe God wants to use you. I believe God wants to touch you. But how much do you desire? And then I've got good news for you. God is faithful and He's loving. There's nothing that you are going through that Jesus did not go through. Because He was fully man. And he was fully God. He was fully tempted. And he overca overcame. And by the blood of Jesus we are forgiven. And I'm going to pray now. I'm closing. I'm praying for, for all of you. And I'm, I want to pray for people that has maybe missed the mark. That you can ask the Lord for forgiveness. I'm going to pray for people that are saying, Yuri, I've, and God, I feel incapacitated. I feel like I'm struggling to walk, but I've got a desire to walk. I'm going to pray that God touches you today. Then I'm going to pray for people that's already received an instruction from Jesus to do something for Him, that you will respond, that you will be faithful, that you will stand strong in the precious name of Jesus. And then I'm going to do an altar call at the end. Let's pray. Father Lord, today we come before you in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that as you spoke to this blind man, you spoke to the layman, you said, get up and walk. You spoke to the blind man, go and wash, and then on the way back, Lord, today when you speak to us, Father, may we respond. I pray now for every person, Lord, every person that is feeling guilty, that is feeling that there's an area in their life that they have to yield and give to you. If that's you today, I want you to pray with me. Pray, Father, I come now in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me for this area for I've sinned. Father, please forgive my sin. Forgive me for the fact that I've missed my mark. I want, I'm giving this to you right now in the name of Jesus. I'm repenting from this. I'm turning around in the opposite direction. I give this to you in the name of Jesus. Then I want you to pray with me. If you're someone that's saying, I need God to touch me. I need God to change me and to make me strong in the direction that He sent me. Just pray with me. Father, Lord, 
Today I come before, before you, Lord, I, I need your touch, I need your strength, I need, I need the Holy Spirit to lead me, to be obedient in what you've called me to be, in the precious, precious, precious name of Jesus. Father, help me to stand strong, help me to be faithful with what you've called me, in Jesus' name. And then, if you've never accepted your life, and today is the day, because there was a day that I gave my life to Jesus. If that's you, just pray with me. Father, Today I come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you my life. I believe that Jesus died and he rose again. He's seated on the right hand side of the Father. And he's poured out the Holy Spirit right now, Father. Forgive me all my sins. Lord, I forgive. Please forgive me all my sins. I give it all to you. Thank you that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. I ask that you will give me the Holy Spirit now. I receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And from today, I'm called a child of God. And then I'm going to pray for healing. If you need healing, just put your place. I think there's someone with a, with a knee. Just put your hand on the knee. We pray for that knee now in the name of Jesus. I pray restoration and healing in Jesus' name. And healing in the name of Jesus. Because remember, Jesus heals by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't heal. We pray the Word of God. Jesus does the healing. But then I want to pray for all the other healings. I pray for the healing in the name of of Jesus please touch them and please change them and then the most important thing I want to close with today is you must remember one thing Jesus and God loves you he loves you he loves you he will never stop loving you he also disciplines us but he loves us in the precious name of Jesus father I send them I pray over them I pray may your goodness your mercy your grace be over them in the name of Jesus God bless you Please connect with us. Go to our website if you want to make a contribution. Um, if you want to start a group, Alliance of the Valley group, there's areas all over the world that doesn't have groups yet. If God is speaking to you to be one that starts a group there, please contact us. We've got a growth track that we will go take you through for, for, uh, to, to start a group. And um, yes, we're excited about what God is doing. We're praying for you. We love you in Jesus' name.